So good evening, everybody, and uh, welcome to the IACT IMDHA virtual chapter for April 2020. Every time I hear myself say 2020, I feel a little bit like Barbara Walters. Have you ever noticed how that works out? Of course. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's just amazing. So, um, so by the way, uh, one of the things we want to let people know is that because you're here now, or if you're watching this on the replay later on, you can get CEUs for attending this, uh, an hour and a half's worth of CEUs from IACT or IMDHA or other friendly hypnosis organizations. Just let them know that you were here and that you want uh, credit for the time. And you'll get it. You know, in this age of COVID, we've all gotten really good at Zoom and that's good because Hypno Expo 424 through the 26th is online. You can do the whole conference, IACT, IMDHA conference online. Yes, we've been streaming that conference for years. Now the whole thing's gonna be done on Zoom and everybody can attend from any place. Three days, 55 lectures, three rooms, 10 pre and post conference programs, live and interactive. And uh, you still got time to get in on it. Go to iact.org or imdha.com, or you can call them even at uh, 570-869-1021. And I'm going to insert a plug because I'm going to do a post-conference full day on Zoom on April 27th, the secret sauce for session success. Yeah, let's share recipes about how we get that success. <laughs> every single time. Hey, <laughs> join me on April 27th. You can sign up for that full day workshop at the IACT or IMDHA uh, login site. It is going to be fantastic. And I've got to say, we were just thrilled with the way that all of the speakers and presenters just stepped forward. I think we only had to change about uh, uh, about two people off of the entire schedule. So we've got all of those, all of those presentations, all 55 of them and the pre and post stuff. And, uh, and it's just all working out beautifully. And, uh, and, and Chris, since you're the one that asked, I, I might just mention if anybody else wants to know, basically it's really simple, is that once you sign up for it, what you'll get at the last minute is a, is a, uh, a user interface. It's uh, basically a, a design with a chart of all the presentations and stuff like that. And when it's time to go to a particular one, you just click the link and it will take you into that Zoom room. And uh, when that presentation is over, you can either stay there for the next one in that room or you can click on a link to go to one of the other ones, but we'll have a complete diagram of all the, of all the presenters and, uh, and easy, easy peasy click and go. So it's gonna, gonna be really, uh, really lovely. So I'm uh, looking forward to it. I'm gonna be teaching, by the way, the Train the Trainer program uh, for two days, uh, how is it now, two days? No, three days before the weekend and two days after. So it means that I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be sitting at my computer for eight consecutive days uh, and uh, and then I'm going to get drunk. I think uh, that that's probably what will happen <laughs> next after that. But uh, I'm I'm really looking forward to it. I think it's it's going to be a lovely experience and uh, certainly a historical one. So I do want to mention one other thing. Just a little a little plug that I'd like to put out there. I, I don't even have dates for this yet, but just to to put a teaser out there. Um, a lot of people know that I do core transformation training uh, once a year here in Orlando, and uh, and I've done it in some various other places. But I've now also entered into an agreement with Connie Ray Andreas, the Creative Core Transformation, to run a, a three evening, like the uh, virtual hypnotist and the virtual trainer courses that I've done and some of those other ones, a three evening course in the essentials of core transformation. And it'll be like three Tuesdays in a row or three Wednesdays in a row, something like that. And you'll be hearing about that a little bit, uh, a little bit down the line. So uh, that's exciting. Karen, what do you got going on? Anything? Uh, coming up on May 1st, Kelly Woods and I will team up again to uh, do a workshop for you online. And I wish I could give you more details than that, but we're just putting it together. We know it's going to be May 1st. We know it's going to be Zoom. And we know it's going to be probably a three-hour workshop on some really important tips for getting your message out there as soon as the world opens back up. So if you want to find out about that, Hypnotic Women is a good place to check in. Sorry, Steve and Michael, but uh, many of us can find out there. Or you can go to um, my website or my Facebook page because we'll have a lot of information via Facebook that way to let you know. That's coming up. I know some women, so I'll probably be able to find out. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right. Well, then, uh, it's time. It is that, it is that special time, isn't it, Karen? I... Um, we told everybody he was coming. So here he is. Um, I'm going to introduce to you Steve G. Jones. Uh, all of you have heard of him, I am sure. Uh, Steve has a bachelor's in psychology, a master's in education, a doctorate in 
education from Georgia Southern University. He's the author of over 25 books. Uh, he's got taught numerous hypnosis courses and programs and things like that. I have a couple of your, uh, a couple of your programs, Steve. Um, he's done television appearances. We were talking about Below Deck earlier and The Millionaire Matchmaker. Um, great, great stuff. And, uh, and he can be seen all over the internet and at conferences and training programs worldwide and here, ladies and gentlemen, on the virtual chapter. So, uh, hi, Steve. Welcome. Hey, hey, how you doing? Thanks. Well, thank you. Thank you. Thanks for having me, Michael. I appreciate uh, you and Karen having me on the show. And uh, it's great to see everyone here. Thank you so much. Well, it's, it's lovely to have you. We, uh, you know, I, I know that we've got a, a particular topic and we ought to let everybody know that uh, one of the things that we advertise it this way too, is that Steve's going to talk about how to make money in hypnosis. But uh, I'd like to just, uh, just, just to, you know, kind of humanize the guy a little bit if you don't, if you don't know him very well, uh, because he's got some interesting things to talk about. And I'm, I'm a little curious about, uh, about uh, how you got started in all of this, but even more, even more something that got my curiosity when I was looking you up today is that uh, you are a board member of a chapter or something of the American Lung Association for a while. Is that right? Yeah. In Los Angeles, when I was there, the, uh, the director had me, had me in there. And I was, I had my office in Beverly Hills at the time, in the Roxbury Medical Building, 90210. So that's, <laughs> that, that move really, really helped my career quite a bit, actually. I got to work with a lot of producers and writers and actors and so forth. So it helped quite a bit. But one of the things that it led to, or just, you know, me being in Los Angeles led to, was me getting invited to the American Lung Association to talk to the director. And he made me a member of the board of directors. And so that was about 2002. And I left there in 2004, so I haven't served on there since, but for about, I'd estimate two years, yeah, as a board of directors. So that was, you know, that was, that was an honor for, not just for me, but for hypnosis in general, that that association would say, okay, we need to hear from a hypnotherapist about things like smoking. That's why they're interested in it, smoking cessation through hypnosis. Yeah, I got to back up from there and just ask you how you had the chutzpah, the lungs, self confidence to set up a, an office in Beverly Hills in 90210. I mean, I'm pretty impressed by that. Thank you. you Thank know, you. That takes some self awareness or self presence or self confidence. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, I had an office. Uh, do you know Los Angeles at all? Have you been there? I do a bit. Yeah, a little bit. Okay. I was over in the Larchmont area. That was my office right before that right before the Beverly Hills office, I was in the Larchmont area, which is very nice, but I was sharing an office and uh, I wanted to, you know, make a move. So I thought, why, why not? Okay, here's a medical building in Roxbury, you know, the Roxbury Medical Building in Beverly Hills, California, 90210, says it right on the building, you know, why not? Why not go there? And right after that, right after that, I'm not allowed to mention his name because he hasn't, hasn't given me permission, but I got a call from a celebrity who I'm convinced to this day, if, if he had asked me where the office is and I had told him anything other than something very exclusive and awesome, he probably would have said, yeah, thanks, but no thanks. I'm looking for the real deal. So, yeah. And it's when, and it's all about, you know, it's all about, you're, you know, it, you know what I'm saying here. It's, it's all about that. Yeah, hood spa, just belief in yourself, just throw it out there, just be that, start living it. And once you do that, once you bring that out, then people say, oh, okay, well, I didn't realize what we were dealing with. And then it's a whole different experience. Michael Watson said it best many, many, many months ago. He said the best way to hypnotize somebody is be hypnotic. I think that's the secret. That's the answer. Be hypnotic. And yeah. that's what you are being. That's what you're living, is it not? I like that. I, I'm not sure, but define that and I'll tell you. Like, give me a checklist and I'll say, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> what, what is living hypnotic? <laughs> well, presenting yourself as if. Yes. Check. Oh, that's it? I, oh, do you want more? <laughs> do you oh, want is that more? it? Is that, if that's the definition, then yes, I'm living what you said. Living a as life. If. I think many of us go about it the other way. Oh, what can I afford? Well, right now I can afford this. And then, then you're selling oh. that. Oh, and I'll tell you what. 
Yeah, I'll tell you a story about that. I mean, when I was making my platinum level hypnosis audios, it cost a lot of money. It was like $120,000 or something. I mean, I was, I, I, things weren't, uh, we hadn't even made the recordings yet. So we weren't making money from selling the recordings. All that was happening is I was spending a whole lot of money. And uh, so, yeah, I mean, anything that you're, but, but I knew it was going to work. I knew hypnosis, hypnosis audio would be the next best thing. Turns out I was right. I could have been wrong, but you know what? Even if I was, I wouldn't have cared because it wasn't about the money for me. It never is. That's just a scoreboard thing. It's about getting the job done. And the job is helping as many people as possible. If that's the job and you get that job done, you'll be rewarded. That's great. Yeah. That's lovely. Um, I, I, I wonder, um, I, I'm just noticing that among the, the folks that are on this call and, you know, and there's a, a lot of people too that watch the replays and stuff. We, we range all over the map from people that have been doing hypnosis for a long time and, you know, and are real old timers to folks that have just recently got involved with this and they're trying to figure out their way through it. So, you know, you're one of those folks that's been established and you've been doing this for, for, uh, for quite a while. Karen's asking you questions that are just in the right direction, by the way, for this. I'm just wondering if you could, knowing what you know now, start all over again, what would you do differently? And what would you want other new hypnotists to know that, hey, this, this is really something you wanna, you wanna, from the beginning, think this way, go this way? Yeah, it's... Um, I know I put you right on the spot. <laughs> no, 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 I have, I have a lot of thoughts. Believe me, I, I have a lot of thoughts about this. This is a good question. I, I'm full of thoughts about this. I just have to figure out how to, you know, which ones are the most prevalent that I should share with you that I think would make sense. But um, can you refer, just give me the short well, how about summary. This? If, yeah, if, I, if I'm like a, a new hypnotist and I say, Steve, you know, I understand you've, you know, you've been around for a while, you've done some things, you've learned some stuff and, and, and you know, uh, surely you know better than I do. So, so how should I get started? What should I do? Yeah, so there's the list of things I did wrong. I don't know if that's relevant anymore because technology's changing. So you'll always screw up technology. Just believe me, that's just the way technology works. Look at Facebook, they screwed it up from the get-go. They still do. I mean, that's just, their motto is fail forward fast. So keep that in mind, <laughs> fail works. forward fast. Yeah, make those mistakes, but keep moving forward. Um, I, I don't know if I made, you know, I'm not tooting my own horn, but I don't know if I've made any mistakes because I don't, I don't let myself do that. I don't, I don't let myself do anything that I would regret. Um, so I, I think I did uh, what, I, what I should have done. I did take my eye off the ball for a few years, but that, that ended in 2016 because everybody's website got a lot better and all these apps started popping up and I didn't know how the heck to do anything. So I studied code for three years with... Uh, a developer overseas and uh, I, I think I know it pretty well now. Uh, just studying for five hours today actually. So I think I resolved that. So don't be afraid to take a deep dive into things that you really need to understand. You're like, doing it all yourself? Not all of it. I still have helpers. I still have developers who know more than me. They know a lot more than me. But I, I have a good uh, basic understanding of um, PHP, uh, CSS, HTML, uh, JavaScript, and uh, now I'm just now I'm learning stuff that are that can be built for uh, applications. But um, it's it's always something. <laughs> you just you never know everything, nor should you. So I just happen to be a little geeky techy, so I'm into it. So I'm looking at it. Plus, for me, it was a huge expense before I got a hold of it. Huge expense. One year we spent, I think, $100,000 on web design. I, uh, I, don't, I don't, I'm just going to stop talking about it right there because <laughs> let's just say it's handled. <laughs> <laughs> but that's what drove you then to get in there and do it yourself. And, and we started that discussion, Steve, from a, a perspective of mistakes. Would, that, would you call that... Uh, a learning curve, or would you call that basic? You spent that money because yeah. of mistakes. Yeah, it, it was a mistake to get lazy. I took my eye off the ball. We were we were up here after I was on Millionaire Matchmaker and Below Deck, like 2011. We were we were up here, and then 
everybody else started doing the same thing. You know, they started selling hypnosis audios. Suddenly all my friends and these masterminds I go to, they have subliminal hypnosis audios and regular hypnosis audios. I'm, I'm like, you're, you're a hypnotherapist? Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. We have our own line of uh, hypnosis products now. It's like, oh no, <laughs> marketing's moved into it. So yeah, it got, it got really saturated. So it became just tougher and tougher. So I had to step it up. I had to look around and see, okay, where's everybody at tech wise? Let's just, let's ramp it up. And there, I was like a guy tearing out stuff from an old car, just whoop, this gotta go, whoop, this gotta go. And you know, putting in the, let's chrome plate some stuff and let's computerize other stuff. So don't take your eye off the ball. The moment you get complacent and start to think everything's just on autopilot, it doesn't even take coronavirus to throw things off. So, so Steve, I, I took my hypnosis course and I got my certificate and stuff, and I, I, I have a web page. Uh, I am proud of you so far. So far, I am proud of you. But, but you're telling me I have to work now. Uh oh. Uh oh. Yes, and I do. Uh, I do. Yes, of course, as you know, because I can tell by your your teacher type tone. Yes, you're saying that in an instructive way for the folks. Yeah, absolutely. If you don't toot your own horn, if you don't get out there and tell people what you're doing and how good you are, or that you're even there, that you exist on the planet, and that you're available to help people, if you don't do that part, then all the training in the world isn't going to matter. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So far, what I, what I keep hearing is, though, that it's about getting the word out and it's about marketing. Is that the, that is the most important thing? I don't know what it's comparing to. If we, if we compare it to ethics, I would say no, ethics is the most important thing. If we compare it to not doing anything, um, yep, the yeah. most important well, thing. Skill, skill enters into it a little bit, once in a while. Uh, uh, yeah, <laughs> you know, I'd even argue that one. I have data on that. Look at some, um, I mean, look at Bob Marley. Who is it, Bob Marley? Not Bob Marley. No, he's he's good. But no, look at um. Oh, you know, I'll get crucified no matter who I say here. But there are certain, and not Bob Marley. I spoke that name by accident. Bob Marley is great. But there are certain people who are singers, famous singers or musicians, who are not anywhere near as good as a friend of mine named Richie, who I knew back in Florida who can just tear the guitar up. And I know a lot of people like Richie, a lot of them, a yeah. whole bunch. They're not famous. Why is that? I'd say because famous people take steps to get out there. Yeah, yeah, nice, nice. And it's nice when a famous person can also tear up a guitar. Yeah, you know, if they get out there with the ability to tear it up, then yeah. If they get out there and they're like, all right, kid, now's your time to tear it up with a guitar. And then it's like, plink. <laughs> then not so much. Uh, you said it, you hinted at it, that you have to have the goods. I mean, yes, you can put yourself in a, an office building in Beverly Hills, but if you don't have the goods, if you can't come through, nobody's talking about you, you've wasted that time too. That's an you marry You marry the two and you've got a real winner. And I like to think that I did that. So yes, absolutely. If you marry the two, you have a winner. Uh, it's also true that if you take something that's okay and against something else that's okay, but this okay thing does, you know, gets out there more, they'll just be busier. That's just the way that is. But they won't be able to sustain it without more, you know, paid advertising and stuff. I'm happy to say that on my um, regular presence, I haven't paid for my main website, stevegjones.com. I haven't paid for advertising for years. I think one time 15 years ago I did. It didn't work out. I did it for like a week. <laughs> <laughs> But it's that business of putting yourself out there. It is that belief in what you're doing and knowing your market. I mean, you didn't market everybody. You decided at some point to go after a niche market. I like niche because like Jason Lynette says, it rhymes with rich. But you decided to go after that niche market, <laughs> the niche rich market. Did you not? We didn't decide to go after the market. The market pulled us toward it with loving arms. 
Okay, and explain so, the difference to me. Well, it's just like in the book, uh, Positioning, I believe it's called. I, I have it on my phone. I could look it up, but it's 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 an older book. It's called Positioning, and the the it's all in the mind of the consumer. So that's who we follow. What's in the mind of the consumer? The consumer wants to make money. They want to be empowered. Like times like this, they want to get resourceful. They want to figure out how to do things, how to change this thing. You know, this thing seems to get in my way every time I move forward, this thing stops me. How do I fix that? So that's what they wanted. And they wanted to fix it to be wealthy. And the way you do that is to start believing in who you are and start pushing it out there and start embracing it. And then the world will too. Believing in who you are. It's got to start there. Know yourself. Be authentic. That's another way of saying be authentic, is it not? Yeah, absolutely. That that does it. That cuts right through it. I mean, if you're if you're just and I'm looking for the book right now so I can share it with your uh, listeners. So um, I'm seeing if I still have it in Audible in my library. But um, the uh, the essence of it, yes, is be authentic. Thank you for, you should be like my PR person. I should, uh, now I'm saying this, what, what should I say? Yeah, it's Positioning by Al Reese and Jack Trout. Al Reese, R-I-E-S, and Jack Trout, Positioning. And it's a really good book. And it basically says that the answers you seek are in the mind of your potential customers. And our potential customers wanted to be wealthier. And I guarantee that hasn't changed. It's only intensified. And we're here to help them bring it out, make it happen. Mm -hmm. Right. I talked to Steve about having a, a three-point plan. Of, you got to know yourself. Whatever it is, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what you are. Know it. Put it out there. Be it. Be the best that whatever it is you can be. Know uh, what you can give know your audience. You got to know who you're talking to. And they have to, that's got to be the dance. That's got to be the marriage. I totally agree with that. Totally agree with that. I, uh, I, I get guilty of the, of violating the final one myself sometimes, knowing, knowing my audience. Sometimes I think uh, self-help is one size fits all. Like, you know, just, you're just talking to uh, the, essence of humanity or, or something. Sometimes you are when you talk about basic stuff that are more of our basic brains, but a lot, a lot of times it's very segmented. I believe this, so I believe that. So yeah, yeah, knowing, knowing your audience is, is very powerful. Of course, I would argue that as the, as the Oracle said in the Matrix, she had the above the door in Latin. I forget what it is in Latin, even though I had three semesters of it, but it was know thyself in Latin. So I would say that's even better. But after you know yourself, yeah, know your audience. Right. And if you can deliver to that audience, you're golden. Then put it out there and go for it. If your audience and you are syncing up and everything's beautiful, you're all set. If not, that's fine too, because then you figure it all out. Well, um, by the way, I, I just want to mention that uh, when we first uh, were talking about getting you on here, Steve, uh, Karen had said that she heard you in Las Vegas, I think, uh, what was that, February? Or right. many times in Las Vegas. Yeah, but... but, but Certainly this last February, yes. Yeah, when, when we mentioned it, and that, uh, that your topic there was, in fact, I think, how to make money in hypnosis, which is why we, why we got this one. So... We're having good banter with you, and that's really great. I want to make sure we're not uh, we're not stepping on your message, though. So, uh, I'm I'm just a little curious. How would you uh, uh, how would you tell us how how to? Uh, I think you're already doing it, but uh, how to make money in hypnosis? This is this is the topic, and I and I also have the law of attraction connected with you in some way. I think uh, you have some books or course material on that or something. I wrote You Can Attract It with Frank Mangano, my business partner and good friend of almost 20 years. Yeah, he used to be a bus driver. He's a rags to riches story. Now he's a multimillionaire. So we wrote You Can Attract It together. Thank you for mentioning that. And uh, yeah, my website is stevegjones.com. I have a free wealth building hypnosis audio there. If anybody wants that, you're welcome to it. And uh, I am here to serve and you just let me know how I can do that. If you'd like me to just go ahead and start on how to make money as a hypnotherapist, I will start from the beginning and, and run with it. Yeah, feel free to notice, I'm oh. not shy about butting in if I want to, so by all means, <laughs> I would say start. 
What okay. do you think, Michael? I didn't mean to butt in on you. No, that's fine. That was that was exactly. Michael, should I tell everyone how to get wealthy in hypnosis or not? I mean, it's your choice, uh, apparently. So, how about if you just whisper it, that, and Karen and I will decide if the other people should hear it. Okay. <laughs> be, be, be authentic and work hard. Go ahead. Go ahead and tell tell them about that. Yeah. I can tell them. Okay. Yeah, tell them okay. One. So, just so everyone knows now, be authentic and work hard. Uh, that those are the secrets and be authentic is everything we've been talking about. So we pretty much got that covered and the work hard part comes next and you've got to get it out there. Uh, I teach in the class that, uh, you know, things like this are great. Uh, you want to have a web presence. Uh, you want to have uh, some sort of app. Uh, you know, that's the most recent thing. I'm, I'm studying right now. In fact, as I as I glance over at my uh, desktop, I see uh, something from from earlier, which is the uh, the code I was working on for my new app. So, even though I've already got things established, I'm still running at full speed. So, and I'm not slowing down ever. I don't slow down anymore. I did that. I learned. I, I stopped and then I learned. So, you know, I'm, I'm going at full speed. So you should too. And that means adopting the latest technology. You know, if you're a hypnotherapist or anything else, selling ice cream, it doesn't matter. Uh, you've got to be on the latest technology. You've got to be on Pinterest. You've got to be on YouTube doing videos. That's free. You've got to have a website. You've got to have an app if you can. If you can afford one, get a good one. If you can't afford one, get a not good one. If you can afford one and you're a programmer, get a not good one and then fix it up, which is what I'm doing. So you can figure out what's going on and you can move forward. Uh, you can, um, what else, Facebook, I mean, everything's free. So it's, I, th I think now people are turning to online. Now people see what I've been saying, like, you know, okay, I don't know why everyone's flying around doing these things. I'll go to things when people are in Vegas, but I'm, you know, this flying around stuff, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a business model that has too many moving parts for me. And so you can make money online uh, a lot more easily and reach a lot more people. And so part of it is having that outreach, then you have them go to an email list, from the email list, you email them and let, you know, let them know what's going on. And you also let them know about any services or products that you have available for purchase. The end. Yeah, yeah. Now, when, when you were talking about the fact that you keep going and you keep going, you know, I, I think uh, there's, there's something in here that, that really touches home with me. You know, I'm, I'm doing the, uh, as I mentioned earlier, I'm doing the master trainer training for IAC and I'm DHA and I, or for IAC rather, and I and I and I made the worst piece of advertising <laughs> that I've ever done in my life. I swear this was, you know. But I I got a beat, I'm sure. Well, well, they want they wanted me to put just a little video on the page promoting the course. It's like you know, could you just give us like two or three minutes worth of video? And I, and I I, I swear to God, I struggled with it, see, because <clears throat> I'm a believer in vocation. You know, I I I I think you know if if your heart isn't in it. You know, you're not gonna you're not gonna be able to work that hard and to put forth that much effort if your heart really is in it. It's not gonna be much effort. It's it's not gonna be the same thing at all. So so my my pitch was kind of like, if you really you know if you really want to do this, then uh, then I think you oughta, you know. But but if you don't, we're really not in <laughs> we're really not interested in having to talk you into it. Uh, yeah and, yeah that's yeah good. I mean I feel the same way. You know. People ask me at parties, does hypnosis work? And I say, you know, or, or they say, I don't think hypnosis works. And I say, I think you're right because they're creating their own reality. You right. know, I'm not going to get into a fight about it. Just have your reality, enjoy it. That's, and yeah, I'm fine. I, I agree. Yeah, yeah. Well, and then you can keep doing stuff because, because it really matters to you. It's something, you know, it, it, it's something that is, that is, that you've got some heart connection with. And that's part of the authenticity stuff that we're talking about, I'm sure. Yeah, I mean, hypnosis is where it's at. I mean, if you're not, I mean, this whole thing is happening because of your belief system. That's what's driving everything, including the way you're experiencing the coronavirus. It's driving the whole thing. Oh, so, you mean the yeah. whole thing? The whole thing, yeah. Your whole universe, the way you perceive everything. 
Sure. Yeah, all coming from here. That's where it starts. And uh, I listen to the book of Est uh, regularly, by the way. I think it's chapter three. It's my favorite chapter. Uh, it's by Luke Reinholdt, I believe it is. Yeah, where he went yeah. to. Uh, I love this book very well. Yeah, that's a great book <laughs> where he just, I mean, the essence of the book, he goes to Earhart seminar training, yeah. Warner Earhart talking about uh, the way it is. And uh, it l later became landmark. Yeah, I'm an escapee from the old Est training. I mean, this is this is kind of one. You, you went to Est? Yeah. No way. Yeah, you the, met Warner Earhart? The, yeah, yeah. The no and the no bathroom and the no gum chewing Est. What? In the Gestapo days. You were there for the no peeing for the whole time thing. Yeah. That's why you have these law. Now it all makes sense. When I looked at this in like 90 minutes, I immediately thought of Werner Erhard. That is funny. <laughs> that, it all makes sense. Werner Erhard was known for having these seminars in San Francisco and other places where he'd just have the people sit through like four days of him talking up there and they couldn't use the bathroom all day for like hours and hours. But here's an escapee <laughs> from the program who lived to talk about it, and you're verifying that. That is hilarious. No, I'm all I'm all for that. I mean, it sounds crazy, it sounds insane, but it opened my mind. And it, and I didn't go back and become a person who hangs out there or anything. Did it did it change your life as well? It did. I, I think it's one of the most important things that ever happened to me. And there was also a place where literally, and I, and by the way, I met my husband there. And there was a place where both of us escaped. Um, and, and, and that word really is, is, is fitting, but there were pieces of that message that were really, really important to us and, and, wow. uh, uh, and, and have made all the difference in the world. Wow, yeah, yeah, it's like that, it's like that. And you hear about that. I mean, everyone who's been through it has, has like a story like that, and, except and, for the people who walk out on day one, they, they have a different well, story. And, and to be fair, uh, the, the, the bathroom thing isn't quite as brutal as, because uh, everybody hears this, you know, you can't pee forever and ever. It's not really true. You know, there are designated breaks and stuff, but what happens is when you get to the point in the training where if, if bathroom breaks were allowed whenever you wanted them, when you get to the point in the training, they say, well, now we're going to talk about your childhood and your relationship with your mother. All of a sudden, everybody's got to pee. You know, so it's <laughs> so it like, oh, no, no, no. You're in the room now <laughs> because this is the topic. Um, and it really was to avoid people walking out of, of sensitive areas. That was pretty cool stuff. That, oh, now that makes sense. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah. yeah, I get it. Crowd control. It, yeah, it's all like that. It's all like that. It's kind of tough. It's like boot camp for your brain. It's like, my brain wants to go here. No, whack, that's wrong. My brain wants to go here. And if you listen to the book, he they refer to them as a-holes. They actually say the word. I mean, yeah. then they cuss and they, and it's based on that that ancient discipline you know when the when the student comes to the master the master i don't know beats the student or something and yeah. has to get all that you know that wrong thinking out of them and it's so true though it's so true and you find that out when you go through landmark that's why i listen to the book of est i believe it's chapter three it's my favorite <laughs> one almost <laughs> daily it's just oh my god they nailed it in est 319 it says <laughs> yes, yes. I used to be a preacher. Yeah, I used to be a preacher for the Church of Christ for five years. Yeah, so I could start now preaching the book of Est. Instead of Esther, I've gone to Est. Yes, indeed. <laughs> we shortened it a little bit. And you know that Michael was a priest. Really? Uh -oh. <laughs> yeah. Wow. A, it was a small, monk. fascinating world. Yeah, and a Benedictine monk for a couple of years. Wow, that is so cool. I started buying coffee from some monks. It's called like Monk Brewery or something. I don't yeah. know. You're probably not part of that, but. Monks make cool all the order. best liquor in the world. That's all I know. <laughs> they always did in the movies. <laughs> I, but uh, that, so it's really, uh, it's really the case, huh? Yeah. They always. Sure enough. I don't even know if they always did in the movies. I don't remember what monks do. They just kind of, they're monk-like. Like they got the, isn't that like the friar? I don't know. I'm making up stuff now. I don't yeah. even know. Well, it's kind of a tonsure, that bald spot thing, though. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Look, see. Oh, you have the. <laughs> oh my goodness. So is. <laughs> did they make you? Is it programmed in? Yeah. yeah exactly. <laughs> that's that's great. You're part of a long descending line of monk clones. Yeah. Well, we're drifting. 
I was just going to say, so let me bring us back to <laughs> hypnosis and... And you are amazing and we're back. Making money being a hypnotist. It is possible. It is quite possible. What's your oh, that part's easy. Yeah, the monk part, not so easy. Yeah, making money as a hypnotherapist is easy. So after you have all your social media out there and do what all the kids are doing, you don't know any kids, you know, start, find, you know, find a kid and ask them somehow to say... What are you looking at on your phone? You know, when they come out again, uh, you know, you want to find out what the youngsters are looking at, what the millennials are looking at, what the, whoever's before them, you know, what are they doing? And uh, yeah, for example, I had a, a, a meeting, a, a Skype meeting like this. Uh, it was Zoom or Skype or whatever, whatever the kids are using these days. And I was at the yearly meeting. We sell stuff with Joe Vitale from The Secret and his assistant was there and his, his assistant said my 17 year old daughter said your instagram sucks and i'm like well you tell your 17 year old daughter to let me know what's wrong with my instagram and we'll get it fixed and next thing you know i'm paying her and she's telling me about instagram and stuff so we started tweaking it based on what the 17 year old was saying why were we giving her the time of day how can she know anything about marketing yeah. She's 17. It's her platform. It's her, what? it's her platform. Exactly. She knows what people like to see. But then we had to balance it with, well, you know, apparently what they like to see is a picture of me every day. That's that's what they want to see. That's too labor intensive. Sorry, 17 year old, but we got, you know, I got other things to do, like grown up stuff or whatever. I don't want to just take pictures of myself every day. So uh, we just automated that part. That's it, but most of it was driven by a 17 year old. I've got years of marketing experience with hypnosis stuff. Why would I ask someone who wasn't even born yet when I started online? Mm -hmm. Because that's where the answer is in the mind of your future consumer. Yeah, yeah. While we're, while we're putting together this virtual conference, one thing that I'm very clear about is that uh, the people who know the answers to the questions that we have about how to do the technology are, uh, you know, are, are certainly the junior members of our community. Meaning you don't have many? No, well, no, but I mean that they are the ones, but, but that they are the ones to talk. Oh, the younger about. ones. That, 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 I, that I get people on here all the time saying, you know, I don't know how to log online. Or I can't even get to a Zoom meeting. And I'm like, you know, ask your ask your ten year old, you know, nephew. So true, so true. Always ask the kids. Always hire the kids. You know, I have I have me. I have my business partners. I have my assistant. I have our, our sound engineer. We're all we're all aging gracefully together. But you know, when we have something to do, that's one of these new fan newfangled things that these kids are into. We're gonna call in a kid. You know, we're going to pay them to handle this and handle that. If I want to learn it, I'll learn it because I like learning code. If you don't, pay the kid. The kid probably knows it better than, you know, whoever you've been using to do it because they probably didn't keep up. That's just the reality of it. And if they do, God bless them. Mm -hmm. What do you know, Steve, about the mind of the consumer that – has that has I, I teased last month that you were going to talk about charging twenty five thousand dollars per session, and that yes, that is possible. That yes, you get clients at twenty five thousand dollars per session. Tell me about what you know about the mind of the consumer that allowed you to make that offer with the, or set that price with a straight face. Well, why don't you tell me since I'm billing you twenty five thousand dollars for this session? Just kidding. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Bill away, baby. <laughs> I said bill away. <laughs> bill away. <laughs> bill away. That's awesome. Yeah, I think um, here's here's the deal with that. Let me let me take a sip of, of water before I share this wisdom, which everyone should be well aware of. Thank you for asking that. When I raised my rates to twenty five thousand dollars, I raised them from twenty five hundred dollars to twenty five thousand dollars. Uh, and I did that because economically it made sense. The time that I spent with someone hypnotizing them 
you know, that was two hours for the first session, two hours for the first session. So $25,000 for two hours, $15,000 for a one hour follow up. Those are the prices. So if I do the math and I calculate how much my time is worth per hour in a recording studio, given our reach, given the fact that with, you know, my friends who are in the movie, The Secret, uh, you know, people I know who also have large email lists, uh, at times we reach up to 10 million people. So given that, you know, that kind of helps inform the decision. Mm -hmm. All right. So, yes, I get that. You're, you can make that much money. Can you step it back to somebody who, I think it's what Michael was asking too earlier about somebody who's just getting started. That may be way, even though the law of attraction says think big, that may be a little too big a picture. Is there a way you to know, back it in? No, there's not. Oh. I mean, yeah, you can back anything down if you want, but why not step it up? Why not get yourself to the point where you're making so much money in your passive income flow, whatever it is. I mean, whatever you may, you can apply this to real estate or anything. We're just talking about hypnosis here, but this true, whatever it is, uh, then you can just step back and relax. But that's a key. That's a key, the passive income flow. Talk about that. Yeah, passive income flow is just when you have something out there that's making money for you automatically. You know, you have uh, an email, someone gets an email, they opt in, and then they get a, um, another email from you, and th those emails are offers. So we're talking about collecting emails. You know, you collect their emails, and you, you can make offers to them. Um, we also have a, a different branch of my business that uh, deals with buying Facebook ads. Now, that's something that I don't mess with. Uh, because I don't understand it. You definitely have to hire the kids there. We spend a lot of money on that, but that's a separate business selling uh, separate things. Hypnosis things, you know, my, my hypnosis programs, but, you know, different from the, the ones that I'm selling and also sell some, some other certifications. I don't, I don't really promote on my main website. So, yeah, there's that world if you've got a ton of money and you want to find someone and pay on Facebook, but you don't need to do that. All the money that I make through my website is generated through through my efforts. And I'm here to tell you that if you collect emails and you then uh, write out, then you send an email out to them, then you will be able to let them know about your goods and services and uh, profit from that. And they will as well, because they are getting the knowledge they need. Mm. The, the, they getting the knowledge they need, meaning the client. Yep. Yeah, your client, whomever that is. How did you start that though? At the very, very beginning, how did you, you didn't have all of that passive income. I didn't, you know, it's, I can tell the story from beginning to end, but it's so, it's like, it doesn't apply now because the world's different than it was when I was, when I was growing up. I mean, we had to build all these things and that was before I studied programming. So I had to hide, you know, we didn't have things like um, WordPress, you know, that built something. We didn't have uh, YouTube, you know, none of that. All we had is just HTML and CSS websites that I didn't even know how to build. I had to pay someone a bunch of money to build one. So that's how I started out. And uh, I didn't think this, you know, this uh, online thing would work. So I had an office in Beverly Hills, 90210. We were talking about that earlier. I was all set. What do I need? I got all the clients I need. They've got plenty of money. You know, I'm good right where I am. I'll just sit it out forever. I could have done that. Or I could have thought to myself, you know what? It's a little stressful driving on the 405 every day, going to an office, putting on a shirt and tie, hearing people talk about their stuff all day long, eight hours a day, uh, you know, 40 hours a week. I work regular like banker's hours, carry a briefcase too. So I just decided to move it online. And uh, that's what, uh, yeah, you were gonna say something. So now you're talking, now I'm hearing your, your progression, your evolution, because we all have to start from someplace. And the key that I'm hearing here is reinvention. All along, you were never afraid to invent yourself, reinvent yourself, step it up, move it forward, go the next step, go the next place. 
You are so good. Yes, I'm gonna I'm gonna make a documentary about my life. I'm just gonna tell a bunch of stuff, and then you can say that's where you were doing the whatever. <laughs> actually, <laughs> no, well, you were actually saving the world. You're the psychologist, but I'm the analyzing you. <laughs> I don't. I mean love it. <laughs> I love it. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. No, I'm gonna waive my fee for this one. <laughs> well, you are talking about reinvention, though. You started out as, albeit in Beverly Hills, but you started out as. You saw people in your office, and then you got tired of the 405. So what can I do to step that up? Well, let me take it to the next step. I don't know about this internet thing, but let me give it a shot. What have I got to lose? And then that started working, and then, right? And then you just kept reinventing it and stepping it up, and you wanted a change. You wanted something different. That kind of does spur us on, and that's where we're all at right now, figuring out how to reinvent so we can live in this new world, this new environment, whatever it is. Yeah, Joe Vitale has this mindset. It's, it's just the neuroplasticity type thing. Just, you know, take the next thing. If the, the next thing happens, just get on it. Like you're sticky and it's, you're sticking to it. You know, just get on the next thing. Yeah. If you keep that, because that's the competitive edge. That's why people who start a business have such success at the get-go, no matter what situation they're in. It doesn't matter where they start. People are starting today who are going to hear about 10, 20 years from now, we're gonna, they're building an empire and they just started today. You just haven't heard about it yet. So be that person. Yeah. You know, there's something really important in what you're saying too. And that is that in terms of the next thing. Uh, so, so here we are having our meeting on uh, Zoom during the, uh, uh, during the great uh, the, the lock-in, you know, and, and whatever it is. Now, I, I've, been, I've been teaching online to people how to use, uh, how to use Zoom and how to, and how to work with clients online for the last three and a half years, and I've been and I've been doing it myself for about ten for about ten years. I, I was I was doing a lot of training in England, and I ended up with a whole bunch of clients on the other side of the pond. And uh, you know, so necessity was the mother of invention. Now the situation around us has created, uh, well, this this lock in, and everybody and their brother, now. If they hadn't, if they haven't taken my course or somebody else's course, has figured it out, <laughs> you know, and and the world is on Zoom. So now the the, the next question is, uh, if if I were to say, oh, look, I found this thing called Zoom, and this is going to be my my niche. Well, guess what? Uh, the next thing better be my niche because this one gets saturated. The world the world catches up to this. And, uh, you know, and we need to keep, as you said, we need to keep going forward. It's just a tool like anything else. Yeah, Zoom's a tool. So it's all how you use it. You can use Zoom for something cool like this. Then, of course, it's powerful. But, uh, yeah, this is, this is just a tool that people are using more to interface with each other and have uh, conferences. You can use it to have a conference of 100,000 people, I guess, or a million or who knows. Or you can just use it to talk to your, uh, you know, your relatives. It's all in how you use it. So it's a very powerful tool who, for those who will take advantage of it. It's not the, the next cutting edge thing per se. It's just where a lot of seminars are going to be online now. Everyone's figuring that out. Okay, I'm not going to be traveling. So, all right, we're doing them online. I guess, you know, that one was going to be this. Now it's going to be online. Joe Vitale just did that. He was going to have something in uh, San Antonio, and now it's going to be online instead, which is adaptive. That's adaptive behavior. It's the neuroplasticity type thing that I'm talking about. You adapt, and that's what evolution is about. It's all about adapt or die. That's the name of the game. Yeah. That's the story. That's always been the story. It's just a little more clear right now. Yeah, well, and that's exactly what we're doing with the uh, IACT IMDHA Expo as well. Uh, we, had, we had 30 days, <laughs> you know, and it's like we need to, we need to regroup. Uh, it, it, it's 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 startling to think that on the uh, I think it was the 14th of March, um, the Hypnosis Education Association here in Florida had a meeting. Uh, we all got together in in a room together. Uh, Do they have executions during the meetings, or what? Do they <laughs> no. I've heard so many terrible things about Florida regulating hypnosis. I don't know what to think. What's dispel some of the myths for me? Oh, oh, Florida really is not. Florida, the Florida hypnosis law is a conversation we ought to have sometime because uh, I think it's, it's incredibly misunderstood. And, uh, and to me, I think it's guidelines as to how, to how to be a therapeutic hypnosis in Florida. I appreciate it. So it's it. a good thing. It is a good thing. Okay, uh, good, good. Uh, it's, well, it's, it's, hypnotists tend to be paranoid. And when there's a law about hypnosis, 
and it says you got to follow some rules. Uh, they say, oh, they're like, rules? Wait a minute. I got into this thing because I ain't about no not rules. Yeah, that's what doctors do, MDs. Yeah, I, I agree with that because I've been, one of the reasons I got my doctorate in education is to hopefully, you know, talk to Congress at some point to get standardization of credentials on a nationwide basis, not just uh, state or, you know, we're going through the state and nation thing right now, but, you know, if we could get a fe some federal guidelines and maybe Florida can lead the way or California, you guys seem to be progressive, but so if somebody can know what to expect when they go to a hypnotherapist in New Mexico versus in Florida, what should they expect? What is the standard of care? What should they expect? At, you know, chiropractors have it, acupuncturists have it. We don't have it yet. I'm loving it because I'm wondering who would be the uh, Nancy Pelosi of the Ericksonians and who would be the, uh, because, because truthfully, when we talk about sta uh, standardizing anything, uh, this is a really, a really interesting thing in, in the world of hypnosis because obviously uh, so many of us have different approaches and different ways. To I know. Work. It's going to be like the PD, whatever, the PD, PD, the PDR, physician's desk reference. They yeah. come, the psychiatrists get together and they vote on it and they disagree on all kinds of stuff. And they're like, well, we've got to publish something. What do we all agree on this year? So they got to, so it's humans. It's the that idea would is. <laughs> that would be wrong. I'm sorry? That would be wrong. Let's set that? up some, we don't, there are, way too many ways to do this, way too many ways to approach this, but let's ignore that and let's set up some rules. That would be wrong. Rules let's would be wrong. protocols, even though the protocols aren't necessary, in my opinion. So you, you're arguing that you do not think the protocols are necessary? No, 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 I think the protocols are fine, but I'm just saying that it all works. Ericksonian hypnosis works, Elmanian hypnosis works. Right, right, and that's what the chiropractors came to. They do publish the new one every now and then, they got, I think they're on like number five or so in their publication of, of you know, what's, what's this personality, what's that personality, uh, what are the clusters, uh, you know, what's A, B, and C, you know, how do they, you know, is it a spectrum, is a little bit of this, a little bit of that, are they rigid? So they disagree about these things, mm -hmm. and you can look up their papers on it. They, they disagree back and forth, but they publish a book. It, well, it worked out. And they're standardized. So, you know, that's just the way it goes with humans. You know, see, we do something a little bit different in the hypnosis community. And that is that uh, uh, if, if other people don't want us to do it the way that we're doing it, we just uh, will start calling ourselves something else. Right. Now, I, now, now I'm a neurolinguistic programmer. Now I'm a shaman. Now I'm a life coach. Now I'm a, you know. You can uh, jump around. Yeah. Well, you know, you can wear many hats if you want to. That is absolutely true. But uh, if, you're, if we're talking about hypnosis and hypnotherapy, I would say if you're wearing that hat, it would be nice to have some uh, standardization while you're using, you know, we can all agree on what the heck is the term. You yeah. know, hypnotist, hypnotherapist, clinical hypnotherapist, I don't really care. Pick <laughs> one, let's move forward. We can't even pick an, a title. Uh, <laughs> and you want rules? <laughs> I know, I know. The inside <laughs> stuff. I don't know if the kids should be hearing this inside hypnosis stuff it's uh every every organization every group of people who who want to do good in the world and have their own ideas about how best to do that good are going to have issues from time to time and that's all we're really talking about here yeah yeah and 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 you were actually saying that kind of towards the uh towards the beginning of our of our time together as well um I, I, uh, <laughs> oh, oh, I just realized I'm, I'm about to have a senior moment. I, I know I had a question for you and it just completely uh, fell out, but um, um, it'll, it'll come back. Karen, that Bannon. is the universe <laughs> forgives. Remember okay. that. So you do talk about the law of attraction, Steve, and I'm curious, you know, when you watch The Secret or you read Joe Vitale or you look at any of this stuff, people have protocols sometimes for achieving what it is they want. Do you have any protocols? Are you using any of the magic? Do you keep a vision board? Do you do any of that stuff? I use it all. I use anything and everything. I mean, I'm just like a self-help, like a uh, connoisseur. You know, I am constantly sifting through stuff and putting it to the test and seeing what works. So you tell me an issue, and I'll tell you what I'm currently using or what I would use to. No, I was just curious about, how, about if you had any particular uh, 
things that you did, superstitions, if you call it that, or I always maintain a vision board, and as soon as I have something that I achieve, I put oh, something else up. I, <laughs> yeah, I used to have a lot of superstitions. I actually don't anymore. I know that sounds weird, but I, I've let go of all of them. Um, I believe that our brains can be programmed to get whatever they want to get. And you simply need to take a hold of that program and focus it on something that you actually really do want to get consciously. You know now it's good for you. As a grown-up, this is going to be good. You should do this. So I know hypnosis can get you there. It works every time. I mean, it is a matter of even if you're working with clients, it works every time. When they decide on something, they're going to get it. When you decide on something, you're going to get it. But you got to decide first. Love that wording. Oh, it's so interesting. To, you know, I, I don't talk to many people these days because of the lock-in. And here I am talking to people. And it's a bunch of people interested in hypnosis. Like, the languaging is awesome here. Yes, yes. Hallelujah, sister. Yes. <laughs> well, Steve, if you get lonely, call me. We can do this anytime. <laughs> there you go. We'll uh, raise this roof with the positivity. <laughs> Absolutely. That's the way it should be. Did you write down your question? Well, I, I, you, you must have seen me doing that. <laughs> I didn't. But <laughs> I would have. <laughs> well, I, funny, I, because, because it was a ridiculously easy question, and and one that we ask almost all of our guests, and and uh, and 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 not only that, it's sort of doubly interesting to me because of uh, apparently Steve and I have have a uh, religious connection somewhere in our uh, in our blood and in our history. I, I'm really curious as to what it was that. Steve, with, with you at least, that got you to sort of go, hypnosis is a thing that, you know, that I really want to pay attention to, that matters. Well, oh, the, the initial thing was in high school. I was in Riverside Military Academy. You want me to go back to them when I was oh, like 15? Yeah. yeah, tell us about it. Yeah, I mean, it started then. I got a book by Leslie LeCron, The Complete Guide to Hypnosis. Yeah. Leslie, Leslie LeCron was a PhD psychologist, for those of you who don't know. Michael apparently does. But he was involved in a lot of the early research on suggestibility uh, at Stanford and uh, Harvard jumped on that bandwagon also. So uh, late 50s, early 60s, we're talking, you know, Timothy Leary type stuff. And uh, what's his name? The guy with the beard and the, the doctor guy. He wasn't the, the beard and doctor guy back then. He was the guy doing uh, drug experiments at Harvard. Um, Dr. Weil, Andrew Weil. Oh, yeah. yeah, so we're, we're talking way back in the day when, uh, when Dr. Weil was doing doing all that, and Timothy Leary was in his heyday and everything else, so yeah, that um, was the uh, the situation back back at that time. Tim Timothy, by the way, is a teacher of mine as well. I I, I, I managed to spend. Are you time. kidding yeah. me? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Michael, are you like the coolest person in the world? <laughs> yes. What? Well, <laughs> I, I, was, I, I was about uh, forty years ago. Good Lord. You met Timothy Leary yeah. and you met um, Warner Earhart. On multiple occasions and Ram Dass. What? Yeah. Ram Dass? What? I mean, any one of these would be like, you just pulled out three aces. Like any one of them would have just, <laughs> you know, shot me between the eyes. Good God <laughs> almighty. Wow. Well, I'm very lucky to be in the right place at the right time. I want to know how you do that. You're like... Uh, the guy who's always there. Yeah, that's amazing. Hmm. So, it's like, but, but so, so it was this high school thing that got you at first, right? Did yeah, I was reading the book by Leslie LeCron. I started hypnotizing my roommates and I started um, bringing them back to uh, their childhood and having them relive that. Not a good idea, high school students to do that, but some of them, you know, relived whatever happened there and then we did past lives i wrote a book about past life regression it may or may not be real but either way it has therapeutic value so i still do it from time to time i have a and course yours on past life regression by the way you have oh, of course yeah yeah it's um it's powerful stuff and it goes through the whole system and you get valuable information you get the data from the client so you can't argue with that and so then i um I just kind of followed up with it from there, but that was my early my early experience. And uh, then the next time hypnosis and I brushed shoulders was uh, I was like, um, let's see, 
I don't know if this was after that or before that. This might've been before that. I must've been like 13 when this happened. My parents were gonna send me to this hypnotherapist. I'm gonna, sh I'm gonna disclose now. I usually don't share the reason, but I'm gonna share. You can, you can tell people I'm gonna disclose the reason I went to a hypnotherapist for the first time ever. Any guesses before I disclose it? No? I, yes. I wouldn't want to embarrass you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, <laughs> Michael, I would never do that. Good Lord, Michael. How could you go there? Uh, it was for bedwetting. That was going to be my guess. Okay. Thank you for, uh, that would have been embarrassing had you said that. Yeah, and, that, and it's an embarrassing habit. I mean, you don't want to be doing it. But, you know, Dr. Norris, she had, she had this accent. She was German. She had me sit in like a, like a dentist chair and stir a swirly thing instead of playing <laughs> with my friend, Mike. I wanted to be playing with Mike because Mike's fun. You know, I was like 12 years old. Sorry, Mike, I can't play. I got to go to get hypnosis. Why? Um, well, just stuff. Just got to work on stuff. So anyway, it's just weird and I got to go do it. So I did it and it helped. And you know, next thing I know, I'm in, I'm in military school looking for a way out of military school. And I find a book on it, start hypnotizing my roommate. And then my other roommate, then my friends, then everyone's lining up. Then I get a reputation for doing hypnosis. Third floor, front side, Mooney Barracks in Riverside Military Academy. Suddenly yeah. had a reputation in the English teacher's class of doing everything short of leeching. That is a quote from the English teacher. And so, yeah. We were, I was going for it. I had my office set up mm -hmm. and then I just kept going from there. There it is. There it is. Thank you for sharing that because now we have a glimpse at what caused the explosion, right? Because it was an explosion and you got that taste. You got that little taste. I was the guy that, who could hypnotize people. You got that taste of stardom right there. I, I guess win friends and influence people and this is the ticket. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, I thought yeah, it just kind of, yeah, you get to help people and you get to, it becomes a whole thing. I never thought about it like manipulating people, like that kind of thing. But I, I, I knew that it could be a ticket to a social life, you know, right. to yeah. an identity. How do I define myself? You have to choose how you define yourself. What are you? What do you stand for? You can stand for anything. My dad said this when I was a kid. He said, son, there are thousands of stars in the sky. I'm sure, or he probably said millions. He actually probably had the exact number. He was an engineer. But he said, there, let's just use a lot. There are a lot of stars in the sky. And, but you have to reach out there and pick one. He said that. And that stuck with me. It's like, yeah, they're all stars. They would all be great. You could choose anything. It would be great. You could do anything. Shine shoes the rest of your life. You know, you, they'll create a reality show about it. If you're good enough and interesting enough, you'll probably be a multimillionaire. But, so do what, your, do what your passion is and you'll be fine. It, it sort of seems from the beginning, and I, I think this is kind of what, what Karen just said, so I'm reiterating it. But, but you know, you've got a background in psychology. You've got a background in education. So, so very clearly from the beginning, it wasn't just I've got this, see, there's a whole lot of people that when they're 15 learn something about hypnosis. You know, they learn that they can wave a watch or, or somehow or another say the right magic words to get somebody to have their hands stuck to their face, you know, or, or, or to do something like that. But your first experiences, and particularly with the, the hypnotist that you went to, uh, was about this is something that actually has some use and can make a difference in people's lives. Oh yeah, this was it. I mean, I see clients like that who need to quit smoking. Say, you know, they're starting to look like they're developing cancer, you know, stuff like that. They're, they, they have like something in the back of their throat that's, that looks on an x-ray like it might be bad. You know, that kind of thing. We've all seen it as hypnotherapists. And so, yeah, so the stakes are much higher, yeah. Cool. Uh, I'm thinking uh, that that uh, what we might want to do is to give people a chance if they've got, uh, if we've, been talking about all kinds of stuff so hopefully we've uh, stirred some folks up in the audience as well uh, if you'll have a question uh, and you want to open up your microphone and uh, shout it out or you want to write it in the uh, write it in the text box uh, at the chat box that would be all right too um, I, I asked on Facebook the other day I don't know Steve if you've been seeing the the promo that we said but I asked what do you want to ask Steve G Jones and they all answered in invisible ink I'm afraid so <laughs> Ah, well, just rub some lemon on it. I think that's the trick. I think yeah. I saw well, that. 
episode. Well, no, the answer I asked, yeah, exactly. But no, I asked the question and the answer is where there's a whole lot of thumbs up. There were thumbs up and hearts. Uh, so I'm not quite sure what the questions were, but. Uh, uh, yeah, maybe that's questionable in itself. Why are there no questions? That's the question. <laughs> well, I have a question for you. How is it that you have such a huge internet following, that you have such a huge list? I know you've been doing it a long time and you've been in Beverly Hills, but how do you have, how did you acquire all of these fans, followers, people on your list? Well, on my personal list on stevegjones.com, that's the website that I run. There are a lot of other websites that sell my things and I embrace those websites because I am affiliated with them. Uh, but I started, was the question how I started? Well, okay, we can go with that. That's what was the original? <laughs> go ahead. Yes, how did, you, how did you get started with that? With the website? Well, with, with you accumulating your list, accumulating all Specifically of the, the email list. Sure, let's go with that. In just the ways that I mentioned um, um, a bit earlier, and I'll, I'll recap and, and, and tie that together more, uh, more clearly, and I think I failed to do so. So when you have the social media outreach, you're having them go to an email list. So you're having them go to a website where you have you're capturing the email, then you're building a list from that. And if I left that out, my apologies, but that is the answer. Yeah, I agree. I understand that that's technically the funneling system and all of that, all of that. But, but do you do Facebook posts? Do you do more than just put up a picture? I know it's all automated now, but are there some specifics that you can share with us? People who may be just looking for one or two things that they can do now that they're in isolation and on lockdown, where should they be focusing to try to get some of that emphasis, that oomph going? Yeah, just if you want to really go for the oomph, you know, there are different levels of oomph. I'll, I'll, give, you the, um, I'll give you the gold, silver, and, and uh, bronze. So you can shoot for whatever metal you want. Gold, get on all of it. Get on YouTube, get on um, Facebook Live, get on Pinterest Live if they have that. I don't know if that's a thing yet. It probably will be next week. Uh, get on Instagram Live. I know they have that one. I saw Amy Cuddy on there, who's a great Harvard psychologist, by the way. So the goal is to get on everything every day, because what you're going to do is you're going to find your people. You're going to find your tribe, as they call it today. We used to say, we used to just say, find your people, the people who resonate with you. You're going to find them. There are people who your message resonates with them, and there are people who your message will not. And the only way you find them is to get out in front of enough people find out and then the ones who like you will get on your email list and then if they continue to like you they'll stay on and if they don't maybe they'll admire you from afar or get off or you know you never know what's going to happen uh so that's the gold medal get on everything do it all day you got all this time get on it you know blast it out do hypnosis sessions do whatever it takes if failure is not an option well if you got time and a computer, then get on it. All right, that's gold. One moment. Gold takes a lot out of me. <laughs> Gotta pass that finish line. All right, so silver would be, uh, you know, just start, um, uh, just, you know, post a few, post may maybe daily you're doing stuff on Facebook, but it's just a post or a picture. It's nothing live, it's nothing interactive. It's nothing that's really going to get anyone's attention. It's just something that you're going to do and you're going to feel okay about it. And hopefully both of these things are going to drive back to your email list, by the way, that's selling product. If that part's not happening, then none of this other stuff even works. So to get the gold, you have to have the email list, you have to have the product, you have to be selling it. Get the silver, same thing. You're just having a lower trickle go in when you're at the silver level, on kind of on cruise control-ish, and you're just kind of posting every now and then with links and stuff. The bronze medal, nothing to be ashamed about. Nothing to be ashamed about. I myself have pursued the bronze. Here's why. Here's why I consider myself to be somewhat uh, Michael Phelps-ish. I've gotten the golds. I'm good. I don't want to do the live stuff every day. Don't want to do it. Just don't want to. That's it. I'm okay with that. I know that. I know that the cutting edge is that. I get that. I'll make it up in other areas. I have talents 
in other areas such as programming, uh, you know, with apps and so forth. I make a YouTube video. Quarterly, I make a YouTube video. They're well researched by me and a, an assistant who I've hired who's got a PhD in psychology. So that's what we're doing. Uh, we're moving ahead with that. We're posting blogs that are good and they're, they're helpful for people. Again, that's stevegjones.com. And that's, that's what we're doing in all of this. So that, that's, but that's kind of a bronze level. It's all set up. It's on autopilot, but I'm not out there, you know, live and stuff. If you don't have something going, then you, and you can't afford, I can't, you know, if you're, if, if going for bronze would not be appropriate for your bill situation right now, then you need to ramp it up. I don't need to ramp the part up where I'm interacting daily yet. Uh, and I don't see a downward trend in anything that we're doing. So I don't see that coming. But if that did, then you betcha, I would be out there doing what it takes because that's how you get to the next level. That's how when all this stuff's over, you're still standing. Not only that, you're thriving. Yeah. You know, it's funny when you mention this, there's, there's one, one other person that I know uh, that, that I think is as well marketed, uh, at least in my, in my exposure to them uh, with regard to hypnosis products uh, a number of years ago was uh, Wendy Friesen. She was, you know, she was just everywhere. But, you know, Wendy was, uh, she was running a, an online program seven days a week, every single day uh, for, for, I think, a period of a couple of years, which, is, which absolutely drove her crazy, you know. And, wow. uh, it was. And, and she just stopped. She just, uh, just like, er, breaks, done. I think she turned it down to like once a week or something. And then, uh, and then it became the occasional Wendy Friesen show. And uh, <laughs> it's all about pace. It's uh, diets the same way. You know, everything's about that. I, I look at my diet, my caloric intake is 2200 calories. I tweak it. I play with it. I, I'm like that though. I tweak exercises. I tweak sleep. I'm always hacking everything. So yeah, you've got to, got to make the adjustments. You've got to find out what's sustainable. That's why I said there's no shame in the bronze medal. It's got to be sustainable. So thank you for, for uh, as I mentioned that, I see how you're tying that in. Thank you for bringing up, bringing the story up. Yeah, it's it's got to be sustainable for you. It's got to be something that you can, you know, you can do it and it doesn't hurt. It doesn't suck. It's not painful. In fact, it's fun and it's invigorating. And, uh, but I'll tell you what, if, if you've got to step it up so much and even the gold one's not invigorating for you, then you're probably doing the wrong thing. So keep that in mind. If you, if you can't, if you cannot, if you find that you're unable to get in that gear, then that means that that gear is not there for you, or it may not be there for you, or you better find it quickly. And if, you, if it's not there, you better shift gears and get out. That's what happens to people who get into business just to make money. You know, if you're just going to make money sooner or later, the tide will wash you out. But business is an important thing that we're talking about here. I mean, you do, we did have hypno talk a bit ago and we got really animated talking about hypnosis and all of that. But you talk, Steve, much more like a businessman than a hypnotist. What I hear coming out of you is business talk. That's not, that's not a negative or a pejorative in any way. I'm just saying it's different than sitting around talking about, oh, woo woo this or woo woo that or. This is business stuff. <laughs> well, you're asking about money. You're asking, we can talk about techniques. I love talking about that stuff too, because I use techniques on myself and I'm always hacking, like I said, everything. So I'm always looking for the latest, greatest technique and I'll use it on myself and I'll let you know if it works. But uh, yeah, there's the business side too, which is where we're focused right now. That's the reason we're talking about it. Um, yeah, if, if someone is overlooking that side, that's, that side's important. You know, if you want to, if we're talking about making money, then that's business by definition. So if you, um, if you don't need money, then do whatever you want to do. That's fine. Uh, if you need money, then do what, the, do what the people need you to do. Be what they are willing to pay for. If you are authentically that person, let them pull you to them. If you're not, then just say, you know, bye. But it all works out because of the dynamic we're talking about. But the best hypnotist in the world without a touch of marketing and a touch of business may not go anyplace or help anybody. 
It's like my friend Richie who plays guitar really well. Nobody's ever heard of him. Nobody ever will. He can tear it up. Mm. So I'm curious why Richie hasn't called on his good friend Steve to help get him out there. <laughs> <laughs> because everyone must create their own reality. Who am I to judge? And uh, I just let things be. And another hypno lesson, because we can't make them want something. Yeah. We can't want it for them. If you could, I would have stopped my dad from smoking. He wouldn't have died of emphysema. Yeah. I was on the board of directors of the American Lung Association, as we talked about earlier. I had an office in Beverly Hills helping people stop smoking. I helped Tom Mankiewicz stop smoking after 45 years of smoking. His doctor said, he either stop smoking or this is the end. He came to me and he quit smoking after 45 years of smoking every day. My dad wouldn't stop. Yeah. That's the way it goes. And I never pushed it on him, never even mentioned it. No leverage. And and your and your friend Lever your your friend your friend leverage your friend uh, <laughs> your, your leverage can be your friend maybe not right now but <laughs> oftentimes yeah. you know I, so my my mother is turning ninety years old this year congratulations yeah. wow yeah well and you know and she's a smoker now um, <laughs> maybe that's the secret well and she lives in she lives in a an pack. living center and now she smokes uh, uh, vape cigarette you know e cigarettes right uh oh those might weaken her well. Well, she's 90, for God's sake. I know. It's like she already won. It's like, that's, that was my dad's thought. He was smoking in the hospital. But so here's the point. I've been doing hypnosis for over 40 years, you know, and, uh, and, and one day I was talking to my mother on the phone and, you know, and I don't press her about this. I, you know, I, it's, it's her life and she's an old lady, you know, uh, she can do what she wants to do. Um, but, but I was talking to her on the phone and for some reason, something made her start coughing, you know, and I, and, and, and I don't know what I was thinking, but I said, you know, maybe you could just smoke a little less. And she said, well, what do you mean? And I says, well, you know, you don't have to smoke all the time. She says, well, I could never quit smoking. And I said, well, you know, hypnosis can be very effective for that. She says, she says, well, that doesn't work, does it? No. <laughs> the first time you've ever had, that. when did this conversation happen? Well, this just happened like, like, a, like a couple years ago, but seriously. How did this conversation just happen? Because you never brought it up, I guess. Well, no, she knew I was doing it. No, I, she, she knew all along, but, but it's just like, I, because I was, I was her kid. My, my point uh, is, you know, Richie, you are his friend. Your dad, you are his, you are his right. kid. The and Bible I, says, a prophet is not without honor, except in, in his own country in, in and country. among his own people. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. I'm going to move to the chat room because we've got a couple of great questions here that I don't want to miss. Um, uh, uh, Joe Moon says, we have a lot of solo entrepreneurs here. So how did you, Steve, know when it was time, the first time, to hire others to help you? When, you, when you're not able to do it yourself, that's when you know. Not when you feel too cool for school. You know, if you feel like, okay, I'll just hire someone to look like I've got people working and things going on here. No, you hire someone when you're physically not able to do it anymore. It doesn't make any sense. Unless you have a bunch of money, then you're fine. But if you're starting on a lower budget, which I was doing and which a lot of people uh, will be doing, then you, uh, you do it all yourself. Like I say, you're the butcher, the baker, and the candlestick maker. <laughs> And Scott Babb wants to know, uh, Joe, I hope that was satisfactory an answer for you. Yeah, good, thank you. So um, Scott Babb wants to know, how do you get noticed in the first place anyway, Steve? Is the goal Old for metal. Richard, yep. okay, okay. He's okay, answering it, yep. Go ahead. We'll go ahead and then I'll follow up. Oh, you want me to read it? And no, I can go on if you want me to, if you want the whole question. I how will do be you glad. get noticed in the first place is the gold version where you post on a bunch of platforms, create videos, et cetera, a case of, quote, if you build it, they will come, end quote, or do you do other things to get people to notice your gold post videos, et cetera? Yeah, you do what it takes. If they're not showing up, Scott, you do something else or you do more of that. Richard Bandler talks about this a lot. If something's not working, you gotta take, you gotta take different steps. You gotta take different actions and you gotta go through it quickly. That's why Facebook's motto is fail forward fast. A lot of them, Scott, are just not going to work. But you've got to find out what's on that list and get rid of it. Get it off your plate. It's a waste of your time, but you don't know it yet until you do it, and you do it so much that you find out it either works or doesn't work. Gregory House is the same way in the TV show House. 
someone thinks they've got something, well, we'll shock them and turn it up to a level 20. You know, they can never get away with that. We're going to find out. You know, that's the approach you have to take. What's it going to take? So, Scott, if you've got the eye of the tiger, if you're after the gold medal, you got to get on the dance floor. You got to get your, uh, your dancing shoes on and get out there and just tear that floor up and let people know you're doing it. I talk to so many people who are just afraid to do it. I, I don't know if I'm good enough. I don't know if this will be good enough. I don't know how it'll look. You never know. You never know. I've been on when I was on the Millionaire Matchmaker, my knees were buckling. They brought out all these these lovely ladies. You know, like twenty lovely ladies when I was in the Millionaire Matchmaker as a millionaire, and they brought them all out and lined them up. My knees were buckling. I was having to squat down. The night before, I was in the emergency room. I had a pancreatitis and a four millimeter kidney stone that was diagnosed the night before, like like up till three a.m. And when and when we were shooting that bar scene there, when I was in the Millionaire Matchmaker, it was uh, like uh, early in the afternoon, the same day. And so it's like, wow. I almost passed out. So what? You know, so what? I used to hear stories about Larry Bird who would cut his toe or whatever. He'd just patch it up and get back in the game. So what? If you want to make excuses, and you know this from Landmark, which was us back then, excuses, that's just, you know, you can comfort yourself with that and it can make you feel really good but it's not going to get you anywhere. You can have success or you can have your story. Yeah. Yeah. Story. yeah. Change your story to success. Yeah. There you go. Exactly. Create your reality. That's why I listen to that chapter every day on audiobook. Just it's on some guy put it on uh, YouTube, the book of uh, the book of Est. It's free on YouTube. It's at like fast speed, but that's kind of good because there's a lot of information. Wow. I didn't know it was out there. I got to look for it. Online. Yeah. It's probably not supposed to be, but for now it is. So. <laughs> I didn't put it up there. It's all just spin. It's all spin. Spin it the way you want it to go. So true. So true. That's life. Yeah. It's being, it's being, uh, it's being spun for you. I'm not saying there are negative bad forces, but hey, we all know there are humans out there. And we all know that sometimes humans get greedy and they do things they should. We all know that humans are going to be humans. But, you know, that's the way humans are. Don't worry about changing human behavior. Worry about getting a hold of yourself. What's real? What's not real? What do I really believe in? What's actually happening here? What do I stand for? Despite what I've been told or anything like that, what are my core values? Turns out my core values are following the law, helping people, and being ethical. So that's great for me. That works out really well. Hopefully, everybody has a, a, a tinge of that. But you've got to figure out who you are in terms of, you know, we, and we tie this back into the uh, having, the, having the, to know yourself and having that authenticity. You tie it back in. It always ties back into you. So if we were to, in Bandler Grinder form, watch you, model you, and learn to do what is the top five elements of excellence that you do with your life every day, every week, every month, as an outside observer, what would we notice? Oh, I got this down. You know, I, I think I think my system's perfect, but it's perfect for me, and I I get that way about my systems. So I um, I go to bed. Now I like having interesting dreams, so I watch an exciting show <laughs> before I go to bed. That's just me. Right now I'm watching Ozark. That's just me. Most people can't handle that part, mm -hmm. so. Watch something good before you go to bed, Ebi, because you're going to dream about it. I just happen to like interesting dreams. Um, so start your night, start your day off with the night before. You know, so that's one thing. Um, but before that, I you know I always think you know positive things. Um, I play video games. I, I intersperse these here and there. I'm just sharing things that people might not expect. But I play video games, and I'm I'm really good at that. I'm playing the Star Wars uh, game right now. I am really good. So, uh, but I enjoy that. Yes, it's just a dopamine type thing. I get it. I understand how video games manipulate you. I, yeah, 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 I get it. But I feel good about it. So I engage in it, but I limit it. So I enjoy it, but I limit it. I've always enjoyed it. You've got to limit your your guilty pleasures or those things you know aren't, you know, they're fun, but they're not 
you know, they're just not the best for you. So I have time for that. And I also schedule two days a week to work out. My fitness trainer trained me for three years. So I have 180 videos that I've had him record of me working out. So I pick any number, I pick a certain set of those every quarter and use about 20 of those uh, on Monday and Thursday because I read online, I think the Surgeon General said, or the Mayo Clinic, those are my two sources that I use, that the, that you can, getting away with two days a week is fine. Again, we're talking a little bit of bronze action here, but it's got to be sustainable. Mm -hmm. So um, I, uh, when I, when I got rid of my, uh, my dietitian, I said, the Surgeon General says that I only need, only need to walk uh, an average of uh, 25 minutes a day. That's the minimum. And she said, well, do you want to do the minimum? And so I had a, you know, I had, hmm, do I want to do the minimum? Tell you what, some days I do the minimum. I'm okay with that. Uh, when I, when I push it, I go to the maximum, which for me is 45 somewhere. It works out to better than average and I enjoy it. And I don't feel like it's a pain to do it. I do it every single day. I've been doing that for years. So consistency is another thing. Uh, so my diet, I, I mentioned 2,200 calories. I measure that. I measure everything. It's a lot easier now. The restaurants are closed. People used to invite me to restaurants. I wear the same shirts every day. I have 30 black shirts. I wear the same shirt. Um, I have five different tops. So I keep everything fairly uh, standardized and simple so that I can uh, just have life handled and enjoy guilt-free pleasure like walking outside for my 25 minutes or longer if I want. Sometimes I'll stay out there for like two hours. Uh, but uh, I, I enjoy what I do when I do it because I know that everything is handled. Even the things that I don't really like doing, like working out, not a big fan. You know, I've used hypnosis, you know, I love it. I love hypnosis. I'm still just, I'm still using it. But I go every day and I, not every day, I go twice a day. Yeah, three days a week, it was just too much. So I cut it down to two days a week. Now it's perfect. Now, now I'm fine with it. Now I, I dislike it, but it's Monday and Thursday. And it allows me to be guilt-free the rest of the time. So it's awesome. So it, I'm doing like the, you know, the hardest thing. Rah, 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 I know once this, uh, this time is up that I'm done doing this, I don't have to do this again until Thursday. I don't have to have it weighing on my mind. So things like that that help you go. Whoosh, whoosh. When I have a, a meeting with my assistant, it's 10 minutes once a week. I've developed powerful um, Excel spreadsheets that she can use through the technology that I learned with my developer uh, who is overseas and who trained me for three years. I had a variety of de developers who trained me in a variety of things, uh, but the most recent one trained me uh, extra well, so I uh, developed, developed that. Uh, by the way, you're going to find the best developers in, um, in, uh, in the what they call the underdeveloped countries, they're going to be far more developed in the future, I believe. A little less so, um, yep. a little less bloated than the overdeveloped folks on this side of the uh, pond. Yes. So what I observed was organize, prioritize, and make the time. Do it. You're so good. Yes. I wish, uh, I, wish I had you everywhere. Like I said, I'm just going to Say st maybe I'll send you recordings of me just talking, and then you can say this is actually what you were saying. We might be able to work a deal on that, although my <laughs> consulting fees are quite high. Oh no! Oh no! <laughs> we'll work out a buy again. I'll give you for you special deal. Two thousand five hundred for the first session. That's right. We'll both uh, we'll both waive the fee for each other. Hopefully. Oh, we might do that. <laughs> okay. Fair enough. Right. Well, listen, we we are uh, coming to that uh, to that magic hour here, and uh, and uh, so it's just about time for us to uh, wrap things up here. So, Steve, I, I need you to hang out for just a second while we do a little bit of business, and then we'll uh, give you a proper uh, proper send off. Uh, the little bit of business is to remind everybody, of course, that uh, once again, you can get CEUs for being here tonight. So go out to your, the website for IAC or for MDHA if you're a member of one of those organizations and log in and claim your CEUs and uh, other organizations, whatever their usual method is for you know, getting credit, uh, let them know that you have been to the virtual chapter and that you uh, heard Michael and Karen discuss with C.G. Jones uh, how to make money in hypnosis. Uh, also, um, the video replay should be posted tomorrow. 
Uh, my my real hope is to have it out uh, by noon. It's posted on the IACT IMDHA forum. If you are a member, it is also posted on the uh, Virtual Chapter Facebook group. It is posted on Virtual Chapter group in Facebook uh, as well. So there are plenty of places to see it. And I know that there are probably some of these things that you're going to want to check back and find out just what exactly was it that those people were talking about because it was certainly fascinating. And uh, we've got a guest next uh, next month, Karen? Yes, we do. And even as I'm about to say this, I'm going to admit to a little bit of embarrassment. I'm not exactly sure how to say his last name. I've known Timothy for a long time. Is it Timothy Trujillo? Trujillo? Trujillo. Trujillo. Oh, yeah, Trujillo. Well, I know how to spell it. T-R-U-J-I-L-L-O. Timothy. Oh, yeah, Trujillo. Yeah, I took Spanish. Yeah, Tru Trujillo. <laughs> well, Trujillo. <laughs> well, that's Hola, what I'm, Trujillo. I'm, not sure, I'm not sure he's Spanish. At any rate, he's- That sounds well, Spanish. He's a, he's a sweetheart. He had trauma recovery hypnosis. He's the author of The Tsunami Effect. As a matter of fact, he was the director of the Trauma Recovery Project in South India following the 2004 Asian tsunami. He's fascinating. He practices in Oklahoma, my home state. I bowed out of that place a long time ago. There are restrictions there, and he does it successfully. We're going to hear from Timothy next month. I'm really excited. I can hardly wait. And okay. don't tell him. Even though I told him to watch this tonight, don't tell him that I screwed up his name. I love it. You him. better talk to him between now and then and say, hello, this is Karen Han. This is Timothy. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Michael, Michael, Michael always bails me out if I need it. <laughs> We're here for each other. <laughs> and and uh, what I remind everybody, there still is time to sign up for the Hypno Expo and also for uh, Karen Han's uh, uh, special one day secret sauce program. That is October 27th. Uh, hope to see you. Yep. Yeah, yep. So uh, so check it all out at iact.org or imdha.com. And, uh, and I think that's about it. So now what we're going to do, Steve, is uh, we're going to just give you a, a, a sound bath that is in a cacophonous uh, reflection of our love, affection, and appreciation for you for being with you, with us. I'm going to open up our microphone so that everybody can wish you a good night and a farewell and thank you for being here with us. So, wow, that is very cool. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, if I yeah. do it. Uh, <laughs> we appreciate it. Sorry. That. There we go. Oh, All right. Fill in comments here. Thank you. So, say good night, everybody. Thank you. 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 Good Thank you all. Have a wonderful evening. Thank you for being here. I'm honored to have been invited to talk here, and I hope you have a wonderful evening and grab hold of life and make things happen. Thanks a lot, Susan. It was a pleasure. Good night, y'all. Thanks, Michael and Karen.